A warm welcome to this service for Christmas Day. As we welcome you and as we welcome each other, so let us welcome Jesus anew into our hearts today. Let us pray. We welcome you anew. Lord, you came to us as a tender, newborn babe, not with any show of power, not to punish or condemn, but to show how much you love us. We welcome you anew into our lives this Christmas. May we find time to ponder the mystery of your love for us. Such love that you left your heaven to share our earth so that we could share in your heaven. And for this, we thank you, Lord. Amen. As it is our tradition here and in many churches, we have one more candle tonight, the candle for Christmas Day, Jesus, the light of the world and Reverend Rama Khan is going to light it. Tonight the Advent season ends. We wait no longer. The great event for which we waited has happened. God's promise of a Redeemer is fulfilled. Christ is born. We light the Christ candle with praise to our God who brings joy to the world. Let us pray. Lord, you come as a tiny fragile baby, yet we know that you are God and you are with us. May the flame of this candle remind us that you are the light of the world and that we believe that you are hope. We will never walk in darkness, but we will have the true light of life. Amen. Lord, you came to us as a tender, newborn babe, not with any show of power, not to punish or condemn, but to show how much you love us. We welcome you anew into our lives this Christmas. May we find time to ponder the mystery of your love for us, such love that you left your heaven to share our earth so that we could share your heaven. And for this, we thank you, Lord. Amen. We have come together as the family of God in our Father's presence to offer him praise and thanksgiving. 
to hear and receive his holy word, to bring before him the needs of the world. But first, because we have broken his laws and wounded his love, let us ask forgiveness of our sins and seek his grace that through his Son, Jesus Christ, we may give ourselves to his service. Hear the words of the angel to Joseph. You shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Therefore, let us seek the forgiveness of God through Jesus, the Saviour of the world. Let us confess our sins to Almighty God. Almighty and merciful God, we have sinned against you in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with all our heart. We have not loved others as Christ loves us. We are truly sorry. In your mercy, forgive what we have been Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory and praise of your name. Amen. May God, who loved the world so much that he sent his Son to be our Saviour, Forgive us our sins and make us holy to serve him in the world through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. We sing to you, O Lord, and bless your name and tell of your salvation from day to day, let us worship the Lord. All praise to his name. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. And now I'm going to ask Vaughan to come forward and read an Old Testament reading and a Gospel reading. The Old Testament reading is taken from the book of Isaiah, chapter 52, verses 7 to 10. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of the messenger who announces peace, who brings good news, who announces salvation, who says to Zion, your God reigns. Listen, your sentinels lift up their voices, together they sing for joy. For in plain sight they see the return of the Lord to Zion. Break forth together into singing, you ruins of Jerusalem. For the Lord has comforted his people. He has redeemed Jerusalem. The Lord has bared his holy arm before the eyes of all the nations. And all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of our God. The New Testament reading is taken from the book Hebrews, chapter 1, verses 1 to 4. Long ago, God spoke to our ancestors in many and various ways by the prophets, but in these last days he has spoken to us by a son, whom he appointed heir of all things, through whom he also created the worlds. He is the reflection of God's glory and the exact imprint of God's very being, and he sustains all things by his powerful word. When he has made purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of his majesty on high, having become as much superior to angels as the name he has inherited is more excellent than theirs. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The gospel is taken from the Gospel according to St. John, chapter 1, verses 1 to 14. 
In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God, whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light, the true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God who were born not of flesh, or of the will of the flesh, or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Nadole Chlamen, Ablawe de Naveda. Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. The incarnation is the Christian belief that God took human form by becoming Jesus. Incarnation literally means to take on flesh. For Christians, the incarnation shows that Jesus was fully God and fully human. It is an essential part of belief in the Trinity, and in many ways it forms the basis of Christianity. Though the incarnation of Jesus, humans were able to start repair their damaged relation with God. Through Jesus' incarnation, God began the process of salvation from sin, making it possible for humans to have a full relationship with him. Incarnation is unique experience for humans to receive God and also for God to become human. The passage from John's Gospel is so well known. We hear it pretty much every Christmas and it becomes so familiar that the depth of it is often lost on us. I just want to pick up on two verses in this passage, verses 1 and 11. In the beginning, was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. John chapter 1, verse 1. And 11th verse, He came to His own, and His own people did not accept Him. The other Gospels begin with Bethlehem. John begins with the bosom of Father. Luke dates the narrative of Roman Emperor and Jewish High Priest John dates in the beginning. It is a strange thing that what we celebrate on the night of all nights is the coming of word. Words are such ordinary things. We speak many words a day. People around 60, 16,000 words every day speak. And if you are weaker, you definitely go over 20,000 words per day. They may be used to communicate information. These days, we too much talk about coronavirus. They may be used to tell people that there are dangers ahead. Be careful. And many people these days are quoting the first minister, don't do what you are allowed to do. Do what you ought to do. In the beginning, the reference to the opening words of the Old Testament is obvious and is the more striking when we remember that a Jew would constantly speak of that quote from the book of Genesis as Brashit in the beginning. It is quite in harmony with the Hebrew tone of the gospel to do so. What St. John is saying, he is using the word Brashit, 
a very familiar word to start with the story of Jesus Christ. With God, these words express the coexistence, but at the same time, this talk about the distinction of person of Jesus Christ. The word became flesh. God walked among us, full of grace and truth. But there is a sadness in this too. As John reminds us, he was in the world and the world did not recognize him. He came to his own and his own people rejected him. The Son of God became visible. He became visible to us and walked among us at Bethlehem. But the tragedy is his people did not recognize who he was. His own people did not accept him. At the very beginning, King Herod wanted to kill him. His own people did not accept him. He had to flee to Egypt with his family when he was a little baby. And then finally he was crucified, being rejected. If you have ever been rejected by your own people, your friends and colleagues and family members, don't worry, Jesus was also rejected. He was not received by those who knew who he was. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. This verse reminds us that Jesus Christ, incarnated Word of God, who created heavens and the earth, when he came to his own, his own people rejected him. The story of Christmas is the story of being rejected. The story of Christmas is the word of God going out to the ends of the earth so that people from all backgrounds could accept him and be part. The story of Christmas is a story of rejection. He came to his own and they did not accept him. Today, God comes to us and it is very difficult for us to recognize him. When he comes to us or when we meet him on the streets, he's not in his glory. Maybe he is naked, a homeless, a needy, a person who is suffering because of loneliness, a person who needs help. When he came to his own 2000 years ago, they were not able to recognize him because he did not have worldly power. He was not able to do what they wanted him to do. But what But for the reason he came, they did not fully realize that he has come to give life because he is the creator of heavens and the earth. He is the word who was with God when he created us. He came to us not to give us the worldly power, not only to defeat Romans, but he came to defeat the sin, hate, segregation, agony, greed, and all these things which take us away from God. When we celebrate Christmas, we just remember those people who because of various reasons need you and I. And by accepting them, we can accept Jesus. 2,000 years ago, rejection he received. You and I can turn into acceptance by accepting those in our midst who are on the fringes of the society, 
those who are marginalized those who are not accepted you and i can be a reason of joy not only in this world but in the heavens you and i can be agents of god's plan to bring peace in this world we thank god that we have the gospel it's not only to read it is to live and then we live the gospel we are able to proclaim the word and we are able to receive the word and we are able to live the word and then this world can become a place for which it was created to receive and to express god's love god's love which is unconditional and generous from my home to yours from my family to yours family merry christmas and a happy new year let us affirm our faith together and we say together i believe and trust in god the father who created all that is i believe and trust in his son jesus christ who redeemed humankind i believe and trust in his holy spirit who gives life to the people of god i believe and trust in one god father son and holy spirit amen the lord is here his spirit is with us let us pray lord have mercy on us christ have mercy on us lord have mercy on us and we say together our father in heaven hallowed be your name your kingdom come your will be done on earth as in heaven give us today our daily bread forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for the kingdom the power and the glory are yours now and forever amen be exalted lord above the heavens let your glory cover the earth renew your church in holiness and give your people the blessings of peace keep our nation under your care and guide us in justice and truth let your way be known on earth your saving power among all nations do not let the needy o god be forgotten nor the hope of the poor be taken away lord hear our prayer for we put our trust in you and the collect for christmas day almighty god you have given us your only begotten son to take our nature upon him and as at this time to be born of a pure virgin grant that we who have been born again and made your children by adoption and grace may daily be renewed, be renewed by your holy spirit through jesus christ your son our lord who is alive and reigns with you and the holy spirit one god now and forever amen O God, the author of peace, 
and lover of unity. To know you is eternal life. To serve you is perfect freedom. Defend us, your servants, from all assaults of your enemies, that we may trust in your defence and not fear the power of any adversaries. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Eternal God and Father, you have created us by your power and redeemed us by your love. Guide and strengthen us by your Spirit, that we may give ourselves in love and service to you and to one another. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now Anna is going to come forward and help us with our intercessions together. At Christmas, the song of the angels rings throughout the world. As we rejoice in their song, may we always acknowledge that Christ brings peace and hope for all people. May your church here in Wales be always illuminated by your light and shine forth in the world. May the devotion of the shepherds, the adoration of the angels, the love of the Holy Family inspire us to live lives to your glory in the service of others. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Son of God, you entered creation that all might be made new. Look in mercy on your broken world and speak to all people so they may hear your message of love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Jesus Christ, everlasting Father, born in a stable, to a human family. Give courage to all families, especially to families who are homeless or in fear of losing their homes. Be with those who are struggling with debt, illness and uncertainty. We pray for families separated by coronavirus restrictions and for all that have left their homes and families this Christmas. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Jesus Christ, Prince of Peace, for whom the angels sang, give the song of your kingdom to all who weep, to the sick and the lonely, the aged and the dying. Give the song of joy to all those who are now on the road to recovery and recuperation, and the song of thanks to all those who helped them on that road. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Jesus Christ, mighty God, who led the wise men, give humility, wisdom and truthfulness to all who govern and lead us. Lead them in the way of justice and mercy. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, grant to those who have departed this life eternal rest and those who mourn this time bring your consolation we pray especially for those who this is the first christmas separated from a loved one lord in your mercy hear our prayer emmanuel god with us you know what it is to be human hear our prayers and use them to bring us peace, love, joy into the lives of all your people. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. 
Amen. Unto us a child is born, and to us a son is given, and his name shall be called the Prince of Peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you, and also with you. Please wish those who are with you a peace of the Lord Jesus Christ, and for those who are not with you, wish them his peace too. The peace of God, which passes all understandings, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessings of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you now and always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.